here we are in the northeast Peak District, uh, on, and we've stopped on Mortimer Road, uh, which for me is basically the Nurburgring of the UK. <laughs> so this road, this is what I call it, that's my nickname. And I, I should know, I've been to the ring twice. So yeah, if you haven't been out here, come and check it out. But make sure we get nice and early before the cyclists come out. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Rob. This is my uh, E46 M3. Today we're gonna to be doing a little feature for my mate Richard for uh, Cross Axle, his YouTube channel. So yeah, I've had it about six years now. Bought it uh, totally standard. For that, I basically had the, the diesel version, so 320D, which was great, but I just wanted some more power. So this is my first actual performance car that I've ever owned. Uh, I've never had a fast car before this. Bit of a jump then. Yeah, it was, it was. It was a nice jump. Um, it was my destiny really, I've always, I've always been into cars ever since I was a kid. Yeah. Um, I knew it was only a matter of time before I uh, treated myself to something good. Um, and I can't see me ever getting rid of it now. It's, it's that good and it's just, the longer I've had it, the more I've fallen for it. So you um, went for the M3 because you had the, uh, the diesel? Yeah, the actual, you know, I had the, the, the diesel version and the actual car itself I liked, everything about it, uh, the looks, which again, when you go to the M3 is a lot more exaggerated, it's a lot meaner. Yeah. A lot with a, yeah, with the, with the flared arches and the four exhaust. So is there a particular spec you were looking for when you were looking for the car? Or? So the only thing I really wanted was a manual gearbox yeah. and I wanted a coupe, not a convertible. Yeah. Um, so that's what I got. Fairly low miles when I got it. I picked it up for about 8,000 about six years ago. So they've obviously crept up since then. Yeah, heavily. And I've put a hell of a lot of miles on it and it's still worth more than when I bought it. Yeah. Uh, if I'd have kept it in the garage yeah. for the last six years, it'd be worth about 15 now. <laughs> so, uh, but no. Well, that's the thing, is they're, they're made for driving now, aren't they? Absolutely, it's yeah, yeah. Drive, well, they say the ultimate driving car. Yeah. But, um, so in that six years, I've put on 80,000 miles myself. Uh, including two trips around Europe, Scotland, Wales. Have you e ever e done Triangle. the um, North Coast 500? Yeah, did the North Coast 500. Uh, I'm doing it again this year with a group of friends. Um, I've done the Evo Triangle North Wales, I've done Brecon Beacon South Wales multiple times, I've been to Nürburgring twice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> driven around Europe through the Swiss passes, Swiss mountain passes. So it's not a garage queen? Um, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm very, very anti garage queens. Cars are meant for driving, yeah. especially uh, such a good driver's car like this. Yeah. It was made to be driven. See, over the years since I've had it, just slowly modified it bit by bit. Yeah. Um, obviously, I drive it, I do a lot of miles, and when I'm driving, I always think, right, what, what could be a little bit better? Yeah. Uh, and that's what I then choose to modify next. So, when you first had it, did you kind of like live with it for a little while and then mod it, or did you mod it straight away? Yeah, like I said, because it was my first performance car, I've never really modified a car before. Yeah. Um, I didn't really know much about it, I wasn't a member of any of the online forums. Yeah. About a year after I got it, I joined the forums and then I started to learn all about it and, you know, little, li everything from little hints and tips to like when something goes wrong, you know, the answer's just on there on the forum. It's, it's, it's a brilliant forum. So anyone getting into these things, what would you kind of recommend? Um, what, in terms of buying one or? Yeah, do you, is there things to look out for? Or would you yeah, I mean, there's things to upgrade straight away. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, common issues. Depends what you want. I mean, a lot of people do buy these to, to, for a garage queen, you know, they buy, you know, a nice, maybe convertible, get out in summer, uh, never gets driven hard. So it obviously depends. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna drive it, 
then uh, there's obviously there's a few things to look out for. You've obviously got the, the common problems, which are things like the subframe, uh, which will need to be reinforced if it hasn't already. Uh, head gasket, uh, Vanos refresh is ideal. Um, there's a thing about the, the, the big end uh, bearings as well, uh, which also, again, there's a little a few rumors that there's a bit of scaremongering, so, you know, I haven't done mine yet, but it's, I'm going to get the big ends done anyway. But then that's it. That's all the big jobs done. I'm planning on keeping it forever. I'm never going to sell it now. Yeah. So yeah, that's everything ticked off. Uh, and then in terms of modifications, if you're going to drive it, the first thing you should modify is the brakes, <laughs> which you obviously found out earlier when you came along in your, in your TT. I mean, it's, it's your first real blast you've had in your TT, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, you know, three three corners in on the first decent road, and you and this, I can see the smoke in my rearview mirror coming off your uh, yeah. And um, you pulled up, and we saw the smoke. And you can edit that in later, can't you? Your, your smoking brakes, which is exactly what happened to me when my uh, group of friends I've got who live in Stoke, they took me to um, Wales Evo Triangle in my first time. A couple of years after I first bought it, first time I'd proper proper driven it hard. Um, five, ten minutes in, brakes are on fire, you know, so I, I learned my lesson. So the first major modification I did was the brakes. Yeah. So I spent a grand on those upgrading the fronts. Nice big brake on the front now, it's perfect. Yeah, so I'll start with, uh, start with the front. So in terms of the wheels, um, it came with standard 19s, but I've gone for the 18 inch option from the E92 M3, which is the M3 after mine. Um, I prefer the 18s, they handles better, rides better. Uh, I personally think it looks better. Uh, and I've gone for uh, wider tyres as well, so 20mm wider tyres on the front. Um, I've obviously also gone for the big brake kit on the front, the 356mm with Mintex pads, which makes, again, a huge difference to the braking. In terms of suspension, uh, I've got the Tyne Springs, which is a 40mm drop, which is the hardest springs you can get. And in terms of the engine, uh, I've just had a custom map. Uh, I've also had the head, head gasket redone, I've had the Vanos refreshed then the custom map, so the car's running around 350 horsepower. That's obviously naturally aspirated straight six, which revs all the way to 8,000, which is absolute heaven when you're on these sorts of roads. As you can see there, the front splitter's taken uh, a few beatings over the years. Uh, you can't beat a bit of gaffer tape. So in terms of the tyres, like I said, it's 20mm wider at the front, so the 245s. Um, tyres for me, in terms of road tyre, the best all-round road tyre for me is the Michelin Super Sport. Um, just the best for all-round all -round grip. Um, pretty much the best road tyre you can get before going semi-slick track day tyre. Uh, pretty good in the wet as well, as long as the tyres are warm. So in terms of suspension, so I've got the Tyne Springs on the front, which is a 40mm drop. Upgraded shocks, so I've gone for the Bilstein shocks. Um, also, I've had a, uh, upgraded anti-roll bars, so IBAC anti-roll bars fitted on the front. So there's just basically zero body roll when you're going around the corners, which again, for roads like this, are just absolutely brilliant. Um, combine that with a wider Super Sport rubber, it's just the car just sticks to the road like glue. Brilliant. Uh, other than that, just a slight modification to the exhaust note. I've just basically had the back box gutted, which just sounds like stock, but it just gives a little bit that extra, bit of extra sound, yeah. So is there anything that you plan on doing? Or? Uh, I'm pretty happy with it now, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it feels really solid when driving, when driving fast, when doing spirited driving on country lanes, which is exactly how I wanted to get it. Um, so at the moment, I'm, I'm pretty happy. It's taken me a long time to get it to a point where I'm happy. Um, but yeah, pretty happy at the moment. So I don't actually know, don't actually know what will be next. I'm tempted to take the back seats out, make it a bit lighter. Um, but then I know my luck. As soon as that happens, I'll, uh, I'll need to take somebody out and need to use them. So yeah. So no, it's keeping it, keeping it where it is for now. Well, thanks for uh, coming on the channel and showing us your car. Yeah, no problem at all. And uh, have fun trying to keep up on the way home. <laughs>